Bibles today to the book of First Kings chapter 3. First Kings chapter 3 verse 1. I'm going to read to you uh, that scripture and then another one to follow that one. First Kings chapter 3 and verse 1. And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh king of Egypt and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. And then if you'll turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 20. Isaiah 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for better. God bless you. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. We live more and more in a society that has become a virtual society. A virtual society. Uh, it's becoming more and more common for teachers to actually teach online instead of having all the, uh, the students congregate in the classroom, but to teach online virtually. And, and also Zoom meetings. Zoom meetings are happening more and more where a company organization, people, they get together online and have a meeting online. They can discuss, uh, they can see each other, they can talk to each other. Again, saving valuable financial resources and travel time and expense. And, of course, with COVID, keeping everybody safe and secure in their own little space. There is FaceTime. Some of your grandparents know all about that. You get on your phone and you can, even if your grandchild lives 100, 100 miles away, Sister Tammy has, has grandkiddos that live up in Colorado. And so she can get on FaceTime, I'm sure, and, and she, can, she can talk to them and see them and look at their expression, see how much they've grown, not just hear their voice, but she can actually see their face on FaceTime. There are more and more cameras, if you haven't noticed, being set up all over the world to capture traffic crashes and crime incidents to capture your ATM transaction. Of course, it's been going on for a while. If you go to the ATM, there's a camera looking there right at you. And um, there's even, you know what, we have Ring. How many of y'all have Ring at your house? It's a little device. My mother-in-law does. And it's a little device, you know, you push the button. And if it works right, of course, we have real slow Wi-Fi at my house, so a lot of times you push the button and, and folks are already driving off. I'm out there going, hey, 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 hey. I, I see you because my Wi-Fi is so slow. But if it works right, you know, you're supposed to push the button to be able to talk to the person who's at your front door and see who it is, you know, and all of this. And, and so if it works right. Um, so there's all kind of cameras and cameras divided uh, devices out there. Yeah, a lot of recording going on, a lot of viewing going on, from cops wearing body cameras to backup cameras in your automobile to the camera, of course, on your cell phone to news cameras, and like Charles has seen, news cameras, news cameras, and more news cameras in recent days. Um, and even cameras set up where you hardly notice to capture everything and anything. Yesterday I was, I was driving to St. Francisville and I was in the country and, I, and it was very rural and I looked up in the middle of nowhere and I saw two cameras uh, overshadowing the, the roadway, the video and uh, traffic, I'm assuming, right there in the middle of nowhere. And I thought, oh my goodness, we're, we're here in nowhere. What's, what's the purpose of that? But somebody has an idea that two cameras were needed there in the middle of nowhere recording. But even before the inventions and installation of cameras. God has always had an all-seeing eye watching you and I. And nothing escapes God's view. No matter even if you try to hide, you can't hide from God. Nothing is hidden from God. He, he even knows right now what you're thinking. So he even knows what you're thinking right now. He knows the thoughts of the intents of our heart. And you may can fool other people, but you may can hide from other people. Uh, and even hide from the view of the camera. 
But you can never, ever, ever fool God. So I don't know what Solomon was thinking. I really don't know. I mean, he was what the, they say the wisest man in the world. And, 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 but I don't know what he was thinking. Uh, and he couldn't have been very, very wise, at least in his personal life anyway. Maybe he was wise for everybody else, but not his own personal life. After all, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. That's 700 mother-in-laws. And mine keeps me busy. And projects and moving portable buildings in. And, and uh, anyway. Hallelujah. No. I love my mother-in-law. She's good to me. Amen. I appreciate her for because uh, I married her daughter. And so I really appreciate her. I'm glad that she's alive. I'm glad that she um, had my wife. Amen. Solomon, Solomon grew old, like we all do. Every one of us, uh, youth does not last forever. I heard, I think it was Billy Matry yesterday telling somebody, maybe it was Peachy, telling tell him, hold it actually. Now look, he said, you're a young man, and let me tell you, enjoy it while you can, and do what you can as a young man while you can, because the time's going to come when you can't do it anymore. Amen? Yes. So Solomon got old. He got old. And when he got old, his heart was no longer fully devoted to the one true God because his wives began to turn his heart away from God. You see, the wives Solomon married were foreign princesses, including Pharaoh's daughter and the women of Maal Moab and the women of Ammon and the women of Edom and Sidon and the daughter the daughters of Hitt, the Hittites. And his marriage to Pharaoh's daughter appears to have been some type of special allegiance, a political allegiance with, with Egypt. And he clung, though, to his other wives and concubines in, in love or in something. But he didn't really care that much for Pharaoh's daughter, but he only married her apparently, according to the historians, because of that political allegiance that... that that he needed with Egypt, or he thought he needed with Egypt. Still, he did marry Pharaoh's daughter, and he built her a house away from his house. And he also built her a house that was, uh, same house, that was away from where he worshipped. If something must be hidden or managed and cannot reside, with holy things of God. Right. Do not join yourself yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. You say, I don't really love it. I uh, I don't love them. I can stop anytime I want to stop. I love Jesus and His church and the people of God more. But, but this one thing, this one person, this... One habit, it just, you know, it just kind of feels that empty spot for me in my life. It's what I use this one thing to escape sometimes, to take a break, to reward myself, no harm, no foul. After all, you know, I am my own person. I pay my own bills. I'm not hurting anyone. There's nothing to this. It's not a big deal, preacher. After all, you only live one time. And so I will keep, I will keep this thing or this person or this habit separate from the holy life that I am expected to live according to the Word of God. I put this thing in a corner somewhere, and and it will not be a main part of my life. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to stick it back here and and whenever I need it or want it or desire it, I'll go to that corner and. I'll get in the corner and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take a bite or I'll take a drink or I'll indulge. When I want it, it's, it's going to be there. And after all, I haven't been convicted of it yet. And hey, you know, and, and, and I prayed about it, but God hasn't convicted me yet. I'm not going to quit doing it until God convicts me. You ever heard that before? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on. I'm still praying about it though, and I can't find it anywhere in the Word of God. Well, you know what? It may not be your specific thing, may not be in the Word of God, but there are principles 
laid out in the Word of God that talks about and then specifies some things and styles and of how you're to live and the ways you're supposed to live and, and, and you know you may not be specific in there you're not supposed to chew Levi Garrett or whatever it is whatever your thing is but but there's some principles in there and your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost Amen. is it really that wrong well I ask you this if, if, if somebody were to walk in and see you there in the corner indulging in that would that give off an appearance of evil right Again, if you're happy to hide it, manage it, and if, 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 if that something doesn't mix well with your church life and your testimony and your walk with God, then get rid of it. Run from it. Drop it like a hot potato. I'm sorry, you have to pardon me. I did this. I, I went to, we, all day long we worked in the in the heat, some of us just watched. Anyway, as we moved in a little, uh, a little portable building for my mother-in-law, which, which by the way, if you see it, it looks. Uh, we're going to wash it and paint it and fix it up. So, but we got it here, and, and so I, I, I stood by and watched Byron. Now Byron was out there working and holding different ones, but um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, it was hot. It was hot, and 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 so so. Uh, Everybody was doing their part. Everybody was doing their part. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know when you get hot, you know, uh, there's a tendency to get a little grouchy. Anybody ever experienced that? Thank you, Sister Tammy. Thank you for being honest, Brother Curtis. When you get hot, you have a tendency to get grouchy. So I had to really do my best behavior yesterday because I was hot. But listen, there's people watching you. You, you don't realize, sometimes we forget, Brother Dunn, that, that you know what, there's people watching you. Yes. And you know what, that, that's not the same way to be two-faced, but we should definitely present our best self, yes. if, if at all possible, right? Yes. Right, right, right. Yes. Because we're to be the salt and the light. Yes. And we're, we're to be, you know, we're to be Christ-like. That means we're to be, we're to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. We're, we're to be His representation of Jesus. And so... So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22 commands us to abstain from all appearance of evil. Do away with it. Don't play with it. Don't entertain it. Avoid it at all cost. Don't get it locked away and hidden in some secret closet somewhere and, and then just bring it out whenever you feel the urge to come on. Another scripture says for us Especially even as older, the older we get, it says, and we often think, well, this this is a youth youth scripture. It's a scripture for youth, but in reality, it's to us who are getting older. Whenever whenever the word says that we should flee youthful lusts. Right. I mean, if you're 80 years old, you shouldn't be chasing women, <laughs> especially if you've got a wife. Oh goodness. I'm just human. I understand. But you go pray. Maybe you go pray. Quit looking. Yes, right. I have I have stepped off into it now, haven't I? <laughs> Keep in mind that God does not, He does not uh, He does not uh, choose our judgments. We choose yes. our judgments. God only pronounces our judgment after we choose our judgment. Well, Brother Fred, listen, I'm a fourth generation Pentecost. I'm a fifth generation Pentecostal. And I say good for you. I salute you. I honor you. I honor your heritage. That's awesome. That's wonderful. But at the same time, don't get so confident in your, in your heritage that you feel like it gives you some wiggle room with God to kind of do your own thing on the side. It doesn't give you wiggle room so you can compromise a little bit and, and uh, get a little uh, <clears throat> slack, if you will, with your walk with God just because you've been in church for four generations or five generations or for 40 years or whatever. Don't think for a minute yes. that just because you've been around church for a while, you can let your guard down and get special privileges with the Lord. 
Well, I gave so much in tithe last year, and so that should, you know, give me a little grace and a little, uh, little special privilege, you know, with the Lord. And I can kind of indulge in this or that, and, and maybe you'll go overlook that. Listen, every one of us, I don't care who we are, I don't care if we're 90 or we're 9, every one of us has got to remain vigilant yeah. and pursue yeah. the holy things of God and seek God's face. You've got to keep praying. Yes. You've got to keep worshiping. Amen. You've got to keep reading your Bible. Yes. You've got to keep showing the church and supporting the kingdom of God and being a light to the world. Be that testimony, an example of what God wants you to be. You've got to keep on living a holy life up to the Lord. Well, yes. Grandma and Grandpa and Mom and Dad, they were in the church. They were praying people. They were worshiping people. They were sacrificial in their giving. They were they, they sacrificed, you know, for the kingdom of God. And they always practiced what they preached. But that does not mean that you will not have to pray yourself. Right. And that you will not have to live a holy life. It does not mean that you will just get by by close to moment into heaven if there's such a thing. You'll still need to sacrifice. And you'll still need to practice in your personal life what you know is right and what you know is holy and what you know is pleasing to the Lord. Yes. For you see, listen to me, you see no life is more secure than a life totally surrendered to God. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was talking about yesterday being tired and exhausted. I think Byron said he went home and went to bed at 8 or so. Was it six, five? I have no clue. Every time we got home, I went to bed. And then I woke up at midnight. And I began, Brother Wynn, to, to study. And I felt like even at midnight, for about three hours, I began to write notes. And felt like that God give me this message for today. And so, so listen, if this offends you today, if this crosses your theology, if, if, you know, if, you're, if this hurts you today, uh, just blame God because, because my intellect was nowhere near it should have been last night and so hopefully every message we preach comes from the Lord otherwise we're up here just wasting our time I want to hear from God how about you and, and, and sometimes, sometimes it's not always pleasant but hey if it means my soul will be saved in the end that's what matters that's what matters I want to be saved I do not want to be lost for all eternity that would be to come this far and move out with God to sacrifice this much to give this much to come so far and then blow it in the end how sad that would be that's what Solomon did his wives turned his heart the Bible says in Acts chapter 17 verse 30 at the times of ignorance God winked it but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent Scripture is saying here, maybe earlier in your life, when you were, you were just gotten to church and you didn't know and, and you hadn't been convicted yet, you hadn't been taught yet, and God may have, you know, kind of gave you a little slack, if you will, because you just didn't know. But 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 now that you've been in the church for a long while, you've heard some teaching, you've been under the convicting power of the Holy Ghost that, that shine its spotlight on your soul, and you know there's some things not right. And you can't say, I didn't know or I don't know. When you stand before God, you'll be speechless. You'll have no excuse. Someone asked the question to an Amish man, are you a Christian? And he replied, you will need to go and ask my neighbor. You see, your neighbors, they know if you're christ -like. Also, your spouse does too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your children and your grandchildren. Yeah, yeah. And even the cat and dog know. <laughs> if you're Christ like or not. Hey, listen, you're sitting here today in a church, whether you realize this or not, but you're sitting here today in a church that loves you. And listen, we do not make light of sin. We're, we're not being. Uh, and then we're not up here with a hammer saying, oh my goodness. We're saying that if you have sin in your life, if you've gotten off track, if you've been hiding some things, 
managing some things with a secret heart account somewhere. If you have been living somewhat of a double life, if that's, if that's you, I thank God today you're here. Amen. And I thank God today for the fact that, that you're here in church where, where God can forgive yes. and God can restore yes. and God can work on you and help you yes. and help you be led to where you need to be in Him. Matter of fact, I think we can all raise our hands today and say, hey, God's still working on me Amen. to make me what I ought to be. He's still working on me. None of us, none of us, not one stinking one of us has arrived yet. Amen. I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care how, how much you pray a day. You know, nobody's arrived yet. Nobody's gotten all together yet. We must remain. No matter how old we are, no matter how young we are, no matter how long we've been in church, no matter how many generations back our family goes into church, every one of us has got to remain on the potter's wheel. Yes. We, we must remain pliable yes. in the hands of the master potter, Jesus Christ. Yes. It's imperative if we have any hope at all of being saved in the end. When you're on the wrong bus, when you're on the wrong bus, just simply get off the bus at the next stop. And some buses are equipped with that little cord, you know, where you, you pull the cord and the bus stops and you get off. So, if listen, that's you today. If you're on the wrong bus, there's a cord. Right. And you can pull that cord and get off the bus and then get on the right bus and it'll take you where you need to go. You see, you control what bus you ride. Right. A person's diet, a person's diet is not only what that person eats, that person's diet also consists of what you watch, what you listen to, what you read, the people you hang around. And so we're to be mindful of the things we put in our body emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Would you stand with me, please? It was, and it is so true still, the prodigal son took what was his. He took, he took his inheritance. He took matters into his own hands. And he went out. He left father's house. And he said, now I'm going to go out and live the way I want to live. I'm going to do what I want to do. And uh, nobody's going to stop me. I'm going to do it my way. No rules. Just whatever feels good. That's what I'm going to do. And he did. So he ran out of money. And he ended up losing everything. He lost everything except for one thing. He lost everything except his father's love. He lost it all except for daddy's love. And if you're here today in this sanctuary and you've thrown it all away, you've wasted, and you have nowhere to turn, or you think you have nowhere to turn, and you just don't know what to do anymore, listen, God will take you back. He loves you. Just come home. Just 